All right, I call this regular meeting of council to order for January the 16th, 2024. February. Sorry, thank you. February uh, the 16th, 2024. I'm reading it off the agenda, but anyways, that's a uh, small error. <clears throat> Result, the uh, agenda for the February 16, 2024 regular meeting of council be adopted, moved by... We're February 6th. I believe you're saying the 16th. He corrected. Uh, All right. I'm just making sure we're on the right line, because you just said February 16th. Okay, you know what? Let me go back and see if I'm actually in the wrong place. I'm probably in the wrong place. Yeah, I am. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Let's do a restart. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Uh, I bring this uh, regular meeting of council to order for February the 6th, 2024. Result of the agenda for the February 6th, 2024 regular meeting of council be adopted. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Powell. All in favor? It's carried. Result of the minutes of the January 16th, 2024 regular meeting of council, or regular meeting and the January 23rd, 2024 special meeting be approved. Moved by Councillor Bobic, seconded by Councillor Wojciech. Any discussion? All in favor? It's carried. <clears throat> All right, moving right down to six, 6.1. Result of the letter requesting a street light installation from Dennis Adamchuk and Carla Bopney be received. Moved by Councillor Wojciech, seconded by Councillor White. Any discussion on the correspondence? Um, Councillor Medley. A uh, couple questions. Um, how many requests for lighting do we currently have on our list? And has there been any thought to putting action to submitting an application for the criminal forfeiture funding for lighting in the town and areas we're lacking? I'd have to check if uh, if it can be applied for that, but if it can, we can definitely apply for it. I don't know if it covers that, we'll have to check on that. Mr. Harvey, do you have your hand up prior to? Yeah, I was just going to say, uh, so for this one, most of the lights are about 100 to 120 meters apart, and this would fall within that, like if we go on the <coughs> south end, and uh, I'm just waiting for Manitoba Hydro for a cost. There's one other one that's about six grand, but it depends on uh, where the power source is. Right. Okay. Uh, Councillor Boydra. That's a good idea. I, I would think that it potentially could fall under that. The only thing for this year, it's passed. It was uh, January 29th. Yeah. So if we want to do something like that, we'd have to get our stuff together and shoot for next January for sure. Okay. On the correspondence, uh, Councilor Bobbick. So this means the lady is going ahead? <clears throat> Not necessarily, but we'll just get the quotes first. I'll get the cost. I'm just waiting for the cost, and then I'll let Council know the cost. I just want to give you the distance wise, like it's not out of the ordinary, you know, it's not a short distance from a, another light. If we put one at the south end, it would match the spacing of the rest of town kind of thing. Councilor White. And when it's appropriate, I'm assuming you would send it over a letter to the uh, the Adam Chucks and say, here's what we're doing, here's what we're working towards, so they know what we're looking at. Thank you. So, I'm just wondering why this is even a council decision. I'm just wondering if you have a budget, is there any money left in your budget to do this? Why do we have to involve the council? Well, the budget it would be in this year's budget, it's going to be so. Okay. Well, I guess I could go back to this year's budget. Did we use all of it or like that something? Like that? I, I just, why are we waiting for this? Go ahead. This is just to accept, we, we discussed not putting it on this, this is yeah. just to accept the request, council knows about it. Uh, the the light street lighting budget is pretty the same from year to year, we don't have any <coughs> new lights going in, and it's around $77,000 a year. When we add a light, it could cost as much as 10000 so it is significant. It's, do we have the ability to pass it without telling you? Yes, but something like this, we let it out. 
the, the, the purpose of it is definitely just to make sure that we are aware of the correspondence. Okay, so we're under <coughs> the impression that so on the next council meeting will there be a decision made? I, what I'm getting at is when will the rate meters, rate payers find out that this is a go ahead or not? Well, uh, again, <coughs> it should be next council meeting if I get the cost from hydro between now and then, which I should. Okay, thank you. I was just going to clarify the letter is actually addressed to mayor and councillors, which is probably why it is under our correspondence. So it's to let council be aware of the communications. So that's yeah, that's the correspondence. So any further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. <coughs> Six point two. Result of the RCP municipal policing <coughs> service invoice package for the pe period October 1st, 2023 to uh, December 31st, 2023 be received. Moved by Councillor Powell, seconded by Councillor Medwood. Any discussion? Councillor White. I was talking to uh, Sergeant Hanson today, yesterday, and he says it wasn't too much work and possible. Could he, he's got the five years, 20 to 23, 24 on there. And I said, could you convert that to a bar graph? Because it's just a big page of numbers. You've got to go down each number and track back. If it were a bar graph, we could see changes over time. Which oh, Councilor White, we're speaking about the invoice. Mm -hmm. We're speaking about the invoice. Accept that, but we're talking about the RCMP. Okay. <clears throat> you can bring that up, actually, yeah, in your I number. Will. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 6.3, result of the correspondence from the Swan River District Community Resource Council requesting a, sh a shuttle service be received. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion, Councillor Medwood. Um, well, I just wanted to clarify that there was a letter, if you look at the correspondence from the Swan River and District Resource Council, which is the services to seniors, as well as the board for the Senior Center, so from two entities that work with our senior population. Okay, so this is correspondence. Um, all in favor? It's carried. <clears throat> 6.4. Resolve the correspondence received from Roxanne uh, Hutchinson, Director, Arts, Culture, and Sports and Community Unit, Major Agencies and Program Support Branch, Matrimonial Sport, Culture, Heritage, and Tourism, regarding uh, approved ACSC uh, Project 23LC-050 Swan Valley Arena and Recreation Facility, dated December the 27th, 2023, be received. Moved by Councillor Medwood, second by Councillor Bobbick. Any discussion? Councillor Medwood. I just want to kind of clarify <coughs> this email originated on December 27th of 2023, and it does state here in the letter that uh, we are that they will be ver to verify funding outside of the ACSC grant is in place to execute the project as approved. So my interpretation of that is we should not be discussing spending on this project even for a project manager until we have secured one the funding from ACSC and have it in the bank and two can prove that we have the matching funds available that are required as per the granting process in order to move forward that's my interpretation of this communication any further discussion? Go ahead. Just to clarify, the, the town did confirm on the application uh, that we have five hundred thousand um, dollars, and that that would be the money outside that's right now confirmed. Just to let you know, the rest is I believe under under. Okay, Just so is it required to have all of those matching three point whatever million dollars? Uh, according, we start ex it doesn't explicitly say it in this correspondence, but in the agreement that we signed with the ACSC program, uh, we need to 
prior to constructing have all the money in place. <clears throat> okay, so before shovels hit dirt is when all the money has to be in place, basically? Uh, well, the, def the definition is construction. So however the province defines construction, that's prior to that. I don't know how exactly how they define the NIC, BCNC grant, but prior to that, all the money must be. <clears throat> If we can maybe clarify that prior to anything coming further to council requesting funds being released in regards to this project, that would be yeah. good to know. We're having the, this discussion next uh, Tuesday, council. We'll have that uh, prepared by then or yeah. some explanation on that. Yeah, we'll, we'll have another full information. Okay. <clears throat> Any further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 6.5. Resolve the letter from Manitoba Natural Resources dated January the 18th, 2023, regarding Dutch Elms disease funding being received. Moved by Councillor Bobbick, seconded by Deputy Mayor Morio. Discussion? Mr. Harvey, anything on that? Uh, it's just that annual grant for taking care of the Dutch Elm disease trees. Okay, Councilor White. Have you are you communicating this information with the Urban Forest Committee? Uh, I can send that out to them. <coughs> Thank you. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. <clears throat> Seven, 7.1. Result the Director of Public Works report be received. Moved by Councilor Medwood, seconded by Councilor Bobbick. Discussion? Councilor Medwood? I'm just seeing this right now. It wasn't available earlier, so if I could just have a minute to review it, because it looks like we have some survey results. Go ahead, Mr. Harvey. Yeah, and we can bring this up again at a Cal meeting if Council wants. Uh, I just got back today, so I just compiled it. Uh, today, and that's why I didn't go out until late. So, if council wants to delve into it at a count meeting after having more chats, I just wanted to put it up there so you can all see that information. If this was a request from council. <coughs> do that survey. Okay, Councillor White. But a call from, to your team is that uh, what time would be most effective? And what I read is when we get the job done. And that to me, to me means we'll do it until we get it done. And, uh, and I appreciate that coming from your team. The second question, uh, when you program, I'm sure you're making plans, but how are we going to communicate? Are you going to communicate with the public at large, your streets this week, the other streets the next week? So that, that's going to be a pretty important part of that plan. Thank you. Okay. Um, Deputy Mayor Memorial. Uh, <clears throat> Mr. Harvey, I'm, in the last couple of days with the warm weather, I've been nudged by some residents um, through the community, uh, what the town's plans are for quickly facilitating some of the drainage for the storm sewers that are blocked or covered with ice. Um, now that we have streets that are, some of them are starting to flood and, and whatnot, and then now with the, all the potholes that are popping up due to the freeze thaw cycle happening during the night. So, uh, what's your plans to address that in short order? I was talking to the foreman when I got back and they were going around and uh, opening up the catch basins so that uh, everything can drain uh, to the catch basin, but it just takes a while to go around and find them all, but the crews are out doing that, exposing the catch basin so that the water can drain to them. Can I the I'll talk to the foreman to take a look at that and see what we can do to smooth them out or fill them in if it's a natural kind of thing. Yeah, those are some nasty ones for the tunnels. There are. Uh, Councilor Bobbin. I know, so I was going to speak on this bottle. Do you have the bag dash home to you at the public works? Uh, we have bulk ash vault, so we'll have to talk to Jordan about that. As in what do you mean by bulk ash vault? Like bulk cold mix. So that would be frozen right now. That's right, so you, you don't have the bag dash home. I don't think so. I'll have to check our supplies. Usually we use the the bulk stuff because most of the work is done in the summer because in the winter usually okay. it doesn't get this warm, but I'll, I'll look into that. Okay, I'll probably speak to you maybe tomorrow. I'll see about, about that in the week. Uh, who, where, if there's uh, 
manholes or stuff like that, but that has a concern on, on the highway through Main Street here. Is that something we look after, or is that something we have to make highways aware? Sorry, what was that? A manhole on Main Street. If, if there's a concern about that, is that highway's problem, or is that our problem? Uh, the manhole would be our issue. Okay. Uh, Councillor Boychuk and then Councillor Lambert. Um, I had to, uh, this brought up to me as well, and one of the spots mentioned for pretty bad pothole was in front of the post office. Um, I'm just wondering if this would be something like that we would urge the community if you notice one of your drainage um, uh, drains are yeah are frozen to just call the town here quick like that would be the best thing to do, and then we can go and mitigate that problem right away. Yeah, like we have guys opening them up, but definitely if they notice one, mm -hmm. uh, like Jordan kind of, he has them just going along, but if there's one that's really bad, then he'll divert to there. But we kind of try and methodically go throughout the town so we're not just going back for it. But definitely if they notice one, he can take a look, and if it's really bad, he might send someone over, but if it's not any worse than any others, then we'll just continue the mm -hmm. uh, sweep through town so that we're not just going back and forth. But definitely they can call us. I just want to say that the results from the staff are very much in line with the feedback we received from our public when we put out the parking ban. So I am looking forward to both sets of data coming to a town so that we can, as a council, decide how to move forward with regards to making their work environment a lot more safe and efficient and also meeting the needs of our ratepayers. Hopefully, in time for next winter. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. <coughs> 7.2. Result of the January 2024 Swan River Handy Transit Ban Report be received. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Boychuk. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Council reports. Councilor Bobbitt. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, meeting on January 23rd. Uh, after that, a special meeting on the accommodation tax. Uh, February 1st, I was at the watershed, but the planning development there, and we spent some time there, lots of information there. That. Uh, just for council's information, I kind of took it. I've talked to Mr. Director Harvey there a little bit today uh, to get some measurements on the landfill. Uh, we're going to do. Uh, hopefully, we can figure out <coughs> what the, the bare costs are per ton of waste going into the landfill, and per ton of waste, what it costs for. I should say waste uh, recycling. So council has to know what it is per ton. Hopefully, somehow, we can come to a conclusion on a, a volume measurement on that. So it's, it's hard to deal with garbage on a volume mes measurement. So I don't know if there's a formula somewhere or not. So I guess what I'm getting at is to give the council an idea on the life expectancy of the existing landfill we have. So we'll do it with uh, what terms we have here right now. Uh, I can speak on this on that for the rest of the Thank you. Uh, Councillor Wachuk. Uh, reiterating, February 23rd was a cow followed by the special meeting, uh, which uh, has been uploaded, I believe, to the Town of Swanover YouTube page. Um, then we met with the Urban Systems on January 29th and January 31st regarding updating the Valley Development Plan. There were also open houses held that week, which were very productive. We should have a draft development plan in the next two to four weeks. Um, also had a regular Swan Valley Planning District meeting on the 29th. On February 1st, the Governance Committee also met again with the hoteliers in the community and had some very good candid discussion on the accommodation service fee. And Monday, February 5th, 2024, we all attended the G4 and G8 meetings hosted at the Veterans Hall. And I have some more stuff on that, but I'll save it for member privilege. Um, I do want to add for the Swan Valley Planning District, it would have been nice if we would have had a staff member assigned to attend the workshops during the day. Um, I think that would have been uh, 
received a little bit better than not having anyone there uh, in the future. Keep that in mind if we are going away to make sure that if there's stuff coming up with that, we want to make sure that there's some interest, I guess, shown. That's it. Okay. Uh, Councilor Medwood. Uh, September 23rd, I had a uh, service to seniors board meeting. Uh, it came up that we have not received a response regarding the communication sent to Council. It was addressed in the December 19th meeting, agenda item 6.6, .6, and the services to seniors has not received a response in regards to that communication. What was it for, sir? It was their concern regarding uh, snow removal. So if we can just double check, because at the time of the meeting we had not received a response. Um, also, I attended a support for services to seniors meeting, as well as a follow-up meeting <coughs> with a uh, chairperson in another service to seniors uh, chair in, in another region to wrap my head around the fact that service to seniors is subsidized by PMH. However, there is an expectation that municipal governments are actually supposed to contribute to funding and operation of these programs and these organizations, and we're supposed to be a supporting contribution to making sure they remain uh, well-funded so that they can operate and so that is likely going to be a discussion coming forward in our board meeting this month and looking at where we're falling short and maybe reaching out to uh, it is a valley-wide organization uh, that serves the valley so we will be looking at bringing forward probably some communication or delegation to all of the municipalities in, in, the, in the valley. I have attended the CSWB bi-weekly and monthly community of practice meetings. Uh, there was the cow and the special meeting. Uh, now that our director of public works is back, we can hopefully uh, arrange that transportation committee meeting to discuss the uh, snow removal. And I am looking forward to my meeting on Friday with CAO Pool to follow up on that handy transit and seeing about uh, diversifying our handy transit board and working towards that shuttle service that's been requested and for our seniors. Okay, Council White. <coughs> Excuse me, uh, 23rd we all had the cow meeting. Uh, a lot of talk about the uh, possibility of accommodation tax. On the 24th, we had a medical services meeting and we tried to tighten up our budget, which is important. Uh, Councillor uh, Deputy Mayor Morio is a, a stickler at that, I appreciate that. We looked at our incentives and they're very broad spectrum. Uh, we have, uh, I believe uh, Beerman is looking at touching base with all the graduate nurses in the valley and he's taking a lot of that right out of the newspaper with the graduate where they're going from the grade 12 kids. And we'll also be following up the tours of the school. And uh, David, uh, Deputy Mayor Moore, was uh, setting up a template where we're going to uh, touch base with the 16 doctors we met at Steinbeck and possibly get her them up on the back to sort of to the valley as a whole. Uh, on the 5th, I had the LP SAC meeting. We're looking at their two year plan. It must be frustrating being a corporation when they have a two year plan. But their powers that are making it uh, go faster. And they've talked a lot about moose habitat. It's a big deal to LP, and they're trying to make sure it, uh, it's protected and enhanced. And then uh, I, I, uh, the G4 meeting, G8, depending on the perspectives, it's so nice to see all of the valley rep represented there, all the uh, municipal councillors, the school division, immigrant services, and the legacy committee. So it's a good example of how we work together, and there's so much of that good stuff happening. And it's unfortunate sometimes the naysayers get out and say nothing's happening. Sometimes it's negative. I see so many positive things, and but a compliment to all those people coming out uh, and attending. Thank you. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Council Paul. Okay, well, so most of everything was mentioned, but um, we've had a few library meetings here in the last little while, um, working on the budget as well, and I uh, hope that we have, have that ready and submitted to both the RM and the town in the next very, very shortly. 
Uh, we attended the G8 and G4 meeting. Um, we also attended the RISE meeting, uh, which was really, you know, it's got some great things happening with them too. Um, they're looking at the opportunity of the trade show in Plumpton and Thompson and sending some people there for that to promote the valley. So there'll be some, you know, ask for some ideas and stuff like that coming up soon. Um, the G8 and the G4, it was really great to see, you know, everybody together and um, it's great to see the organization that presented, you know, there's some very important things that, you know, entities in their community, so it's great to see that. Um, just like I mentioned, yeah, thanks to Tammy Chief from the Northwest Macy Council for joining us to here as well. Um, it's important that, you know, the MMF has lots of investments and so lots of other Indigenous organizations, so we have to keep them all included in this. It's another thing that came from that meeting last night was uh, the talk of the CT scanner uh, and possibly of it being here in June. I think this is exciting news and um, I think there's something we have to move forward to and something we should, you know, as soon as we know and as soon as we have like, concrete evidence, we should be making sure the public knows this too. Deputy Mayor Morial. A lot of meetings in the last two weeks. Uh, the majority of them have been uh, talked about briefly, but uh, a handful of general government uh, committee meetings uh, on various issues and meeting with the hotel uh, owners group regarding the accommodation uh, uh, bylaw uh, where we had some back and forth conversation. Um, Medical Services Committee uh, met with that group and as Sponsor Powell said the CT scanner project is on track and potentially ahead of schedule uh, with uh, hopefully an early June, mid-June uh, go-live date. So hopefully um, that's there with the actual scanner actually scheduled to arrive early March. So demolition's been done, renovations are ongoing right now, and uh, the scanner's expected to arrive early March with operational go-live early June. So yeah. hopefully that's there. Um, a number of CSWB meetings uh, that was ongoing. Participated in the one where we had a presentation from the city of Wastaskewin um, on their path to their CWSB planning thing, where they had a false start and had to restart and go from there. So it was a, an insight of some of the pitfalls and things to watch out for uh, through the province here with ours going forward. But it was a, an interesting take. Um, <clears throat> week of the 29th, um, planning district meeting and then a series of other sessions throughout the week um, with the consultants regarding the development plan. And with that, the development plan has been more uh, from previous where the maps, it was more of a zoning map versus now um, the draft that's been presented and agreed by the members present was that the, the development plan is more generalized and not as restrictive on each per parcel, it's more zoned and then leave it to the zoning in each municipality to deal with the individual aspects of it. So we um, should be receiving that in the next couple of weeks, a draft uh, for the board to review and to the municipalities for some additional input if need be. Uh, and then the G4, G8 meeting last night. And then also uh, a number of, uh, we had a fire board meeting and along with other meetings with the fire chief uh, to continue getting the administration process uh, completed, which is almost uh, completed and well on its way, along with uh, finalizing a draft budget for the board to see in the next little bit and then sent to the municip two municipalities here before the middle of February uh, to be blended in with the municipal budgets. And that's all I have. Okay, good. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, for myself, um, started this, this you know, uh, period, I guess I could say, with the Swan Valley Health Facilities Foundation, um, you know, obviously we have a lot of you know a lot of things that we're taking care of as far as um, you know placing special equipment in, in different areas of the Swan Valley facilities, um, but also you know uh, with the CT scanner and, and a few extra more I should say more dollars coming in from um, community fundraising, um, that number is going to surpass. The, the hundred thousand dollars that we had originally set as a as a target, 
and uh, we certainly hope that it will continue on uh, that way. So there's still more dollars yet to come in uh, to that fund. And, uh, and speaking of that fund, the, the dollars that we had committed to um, move from the medical recruitment fund into a term deposit for uh, our portion to the province of Manitoba has been transferred uh, uh, last week, and I believe the money has been placed in the term deposit now. So now it's just waiting for the project to uh, to make its milestones and uh, and reach its fruition, I guess. And it's looking forward to uh, seeing that piece of equipment uh, for the people of our valley and, and other people that will be close to us that will need that type of service in the future and now. <clears throat> um, the uh, the G4, G8, I, boy, I thought was a very good meeting last night. Uh, we had a really good uh, crew there and representation from all over the, the, uh, the municipalities, as well as we had the legacy group there that made a very, fairly good uh, presentation to the municipalities and to the school division. And then, of course, our discussion on the GIS, which is ongoing. I'll be having another discussion again uh, to kind of shore up some ideas or meetings with the minister on the GIS with the Reeves uh, and myself next Monday. Hopefully we can sort that all out and move forward with that. Um, and then of course uh, uh, with uh, Truth and Reconciliation that the municipalities and the school division are working on. I think that uh, we had a good session last night and uh, we're on the path to uh, where we need to be. Um, and then, of course, I attended with the Swan Valley Planning District uh, one of their meetings. I didn't attend all four, or I don't know, maybe five or more, but uh, the one that I did attend was their vision uh, uh, statement session. And actually, it was really neat how they did it and how they had everybody participating in it. And uh, often you find people sitting around a room and they don't want to um, participate, and they're kind of a little gun shy of of saying anything. So they actually had social media, they had uh, an app that you use to answer questions or, or whatever uh, on your phone and then they would compile everything and all the data on a, on the on a TV screen. So it actually kind of helped everybody to be, you know, really interactive and, and be uh, participate. And I thought that in the end, uh, I didn't see what they, the, what they came up with a vision statement the next day or what maybe that they had suggested, but what some of the stuff that did come up through, I think, three groups um, was, uh, was pretty good. So anyway, with that, I thought that the, um, the session was really uh, a great session, especially when they used social media to be, you know, uh, a piece to get everybody involved. So. I think that's it for me for, for now, but uh, yeah. Um, so moving on then with um, the CAO's report. Uh, just to highlight some items that came out of the G8 last night is uh, just researching possible speakers for uh, reconciliation training and uh, drafting a resolution for the valley-wide uh, GIS unit commitment, which will go to council for approval. <coughs> <clears throat> uh, just to update on bylaws, the organizational bylaws, the only bylaw ready for third reading tonight. The structure standards, bylaw enforcement amendment bylaws are all under review. <coughs> and the accommodation tax bylaw, I am going to need some feedback from the meeting last week. So who is in attendance uh, on any, anything that... Uh, from the general government? Yeah. Yeah. We will... Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, and then we're still awaiting review from municipal relations on a draft bylaw. Uh, and next, Cal, just expect the arena project to to go on. We'll try and give council all the information and attempt to get a good solid direction moving forward. And also, uh, yes, the accommodation tax will also be on that, Cal. But uh, we are hoping to get to the end of year end uh, so we can present council with the budget financial plan so expect that in the coming weeks. Okay. Any questions to the CEO? Uh, go ahead, Council Member. I have a few. Uh, you mentioned in your report here uh, investigating court judgment process for unpaid fines through our enforcement bylaw. What is that in reference to? 
Uh, our enforcement bylaw right now is, is set up for the screening, but there are some, I guess, parking issues that we can still use the courts to, to finalize the process if people don't pay. So even though we say through the screening process you have to pay, what happens if they don't? So with parking, you have to go through the courts. We're just we're just reviewing that section with our lawyer, making sure that we're on the correct path to recoup the funds when people don't pay. Okay. And uh, with regards to the accommodation tax bylaw. Um, Have you reached out to the Airbnb? Uh, twice we have sent out ads to to attend meetings in this office. Uh, we have we've had one letter, I believe, from uh, Airbnb. One letter. Okay, and has that property owner been communicated with directly as we do the hotels to engage? And have we reached out to? the contact from Airbnb. I did say I have that information if it's needed and can provide it because she did say at the AMM convention that they're more than willing to provide the yeah. mediation. So if you need that contact, I can provide it. I have that because I was the chair of that meeting, so yeah. I have that person. So we should and be I have been also in communication with the person as well. Okay, so yeah. we should be reaching out to them to make sure they can then communicate to the known Airbnb so that yeah. we can have that round table. And my other thing is, as I'm reading that email shared by CFO Ganita, it does clearly state in there one of our steps are to per, uh, do a public hearing. So, and that's supposed to take place either in conjunction with the first reading or prior to the first reading of council, which has already occurred. So, when are we putting out the notifications and scheduling the public hearing? Uh, I would consider. And in talking to the MSOs, that our public consultations are our public hearings. So uh, I, I didn't get an objection from them. Uh, it's, it's what council wants to do. If you want to have a formal public hearing, we can set that up. We have to follow the requirements to do so. So there's an advertising time. We, we met those in our, we called them public consultations because they happen in Cal meetings. We can't have a formal public hearing during a regular meeting of council. <clears throat> up to council. Okay, go ahead. So in other words, we've met our requirements. Yeah. That's not really my interpretation of what was given, but... Okay. <clears throat> Anything further? Council Bobby. Just to speak, we're, we're going to be going into budget here right now on management. I don't know if we would be looking towards a direction from council as what council would be happy with as a budget purpose and percentage wise is like our, so how do you determine when you're doing a budget is council going to be happy with a 10% raise or going to be happy with a 2% raise or are we going to be happy with a minus five like how do you determine well right now we we presented the budget at i think we were at 5.8 but that's just using the increases from call it normal operations the same level of service that we provide plus any any capital, my requirement to not decrease any uh, uh, reserve contributions, so those aren't allowed to come down. So their council obviously can change all of this stuff, but the, the, the mandate that we've been trying to hit is no more borrowing and increase our reserves so that when things go wrong, we do not have to borrow, uh, raise taxes, we want a consistent tax increase. We don't want zeros. That's the, those are the mandates that we want. But I guess to answer your question, uh, we have no indication from council that you want to cut any services. We have, we have a lot of capital projects that we need direction on and what we are going to do. Uh, so I, I see when we do have that financial plan coming, we will, we will discuss the capital projects and, and what council to do right now we, we again we presented a budget that has no borrowing for 2024 we want to keep it that way but uh, it's going to be easier said than done like I say we're at 5.7 once you see the financial plan that you, you didn't you didn't get that at the presentation it was just the PowerPoint but once you see that you, know, you can go through each line in transportation recreation and 
see what we can do. I guess my question is that as a counselor, sometimes you need to see what cuts will need to be made if you want it to lower. You know what I mean? Instead of waiting for the budget, this is plan B, this is plan A. And, and we'll go through that when we get okay. the budget. But I mean, process. when to see the direction that that's what we want to see. Uh, I've, I've told this, the CFO I'm giving him time to do the year end because okay. we've, in the past, we've really berated him with we need to get the budget done, but we have requirements from the province to get our year end done and a lot more uh, uh, requirements from the province that need to move into the MSO portal. So he's dealing with those right now, but he knows at the end of February we're, we're coming for the budget items. But he also is requiring budgets from our boards, the airport, the library, all of that stuff needs to come in order to get a really, a really close budget. Thank you. Okay, anything further? All right, thank you very much. Then we shall move on, 8, 8.1. <clears throat> Whereas the Community Foundation of Swan Valley is a charitable organization that is focused on the creation of permanent endowment funds and whereas the community foundation goals include the promotion of philanthropy and the Swan Valley sustaining permanently endowed funds, fulfilling community needs and providing community leadership. And whereas the community foundation promotes the development of children, youth, and senior programs, promotes the arts, cultural, and heritage activities, and pro promotes the enhancement of the environment. And whereas the Community Foundation supports health, wellness, sport, and recreation, as well as other community activities and facilities. And whereas the Community Foundation is a vehicle for donors to contribute their cash, trust, bequests, or real property to maintain permanent endowments that will build and improve our Swan Valley community. Therefore, on behalf of the Town of Swan River, we do hereby proclaim February 25th to March the 2nd, 2024, as a Community Foundation of Swan Valley Awareness Week in Swan River. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Boychuk. Any discussion? Councillor Medwin. Yes, will we be doing a social media post in recognition of? Yeah, we can do that once that's shared by them. Any further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 10. 10.1. Resolve the, the accounts as follows, but hereby approve for payment. General accounts checks number 31197 to number 31257, totaling 788,562.62 cents as listed on Schedule A. Checks number 31250, voided due to duplicating check number 31229. Payroll accounts checks number 5412 to 5416. Pooling $122,655.13 as listed on Schedule B. Direct deposits payments totaling $785 as listed on Schedule C. And direct deposits payments totaling $149,688.77 as listed on Schedule D. Moved by Councilor Medwood, seconded by Councilor Powell. Discussion. Council Medwood. I have a few questions. Uh, first one being is the, sorry, let me go to the, I like to, uh, 31204, Mark Richard contracting the $3,108 for securing two houses that is going to be forwarded on to the property owners? Yes. Yes. Perfect. Um, under the 312219, the Manitoba Water Services Board, a total of 91,325.17. What exactly is, like, I, I see the shortlisted items here, but can we elaborate on uh, Yeah, so the water treatment generator project, that's where we're getting the generator and the auto transfer switch. And so that's just the payment for what has been done to date because the generator's on site. The auto transfer switch was supposed to, supposed to arrive at the end of January. So I gotta send an email just to see <coughs> where that's at. And then the water treatment plant PLC upgrade, 
That was just the end of that project. So that one's done now. We upgraded the PLCs, which are kind of the brains of the water treatment plant, because they were at the end of their life cycle. And uh, parts are getting hard to obtain, so that was just replacing those. These are all uh, projects that we partnered with the Guadalupe Water Services Board 50-50. And then the last one is the Lagoon Design Capital Project. And uh, so that's the one where <coughs> we were doing an investigation the lagoon um, found out that what's currently there wouldn't be suitable for an upgrade so they're gonna do a little expanded search around the town to see where there is uh, feasible options for the lagoon and then they'll have a report that I can present to council on that. So these are part of 2023? Yeah these are uh, the 20. Okay yeah. and they're just showing up now? Okay. That's yeah, they bill us at the end of the year. Perfect. Thank you. Um, 31224 Ferris Law, 10,135.78 legal fees for subdivision by Rotary Sports Park. This was a project that started back in 2017. And uh, <coughs> the issue that, that came up was the Land Titles Office couldn't accept that the town was the developer. So, throughout, throughout then until now, uh, it was decided in 20, July 3rd, 2018, in a council meeting that we would give it to a law firm to handle the subdivision process because it was really dragging uh, through the municipality. And it finally finished this fall, and that's, this is the cost from that decision. Okay, so what exactly was subdivided? Uh, it's a, I can't remember the number of the lots, I think it's 42 lot subdivision on the west side of town. Uh, it would be north of the Lurie soccer fields, where the lift station is on Dixie, big open field there. She's asking what the subdivision means, subdividing means, what's the cost of the subdividing? Uh, the actual time. no what, like so what you're saying is that the costs are when the actual subdividing is happening on those pieces of property yeah that's what this is, that's yeah. what this is so basically on that green space there's now potentially going to be lots sold for houses yes that's with correct. the soccer field with rural allowances and public reserve yes okay yes, sorry yeah. no that's okay that's what I want to clarify because I'm like what's happening at the uh, sorry <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little behind I just have two more um, I would like clarification because I'm not sure I understand. I did look at the invoices provided, but we have two charges from Cook and Cook Insurance. So the first one is 31247 for 13,602 that says Auto Pack Vehicle Extension Renewal. And then there is one at the bottom there for 31256 for 29,146 for MPI Auto Pack Renewal for Town Fleet. What's the difference between the two charges? Uh, <coughs> you want to answer? Okay, go ahead. Um, see if folk can you correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, our fleet we paid MPI just the basic amount, and then the liability insu and insurance is through a private, like through quote unquote private insurance. So it's what do you pay? Like your auto pack all in one through MPI. Mm -hmm. Ours is just like the federal RCMP, it's a self-insured where we pay the basic and then the additional insurance is through a separate insurance. Okay, <coughs> that would make sense so, then. So when you combine the two, you get a registered insured vehicle, but it's through two separate. Okay, because I was a little confused because, yeah, when I register my vehicle, it's all in one, so. Yes. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're going through the same thing, like discussions with the, the fire apparatus, and it's just like the RCMP, you pay your basic premium to register a vehicle mm -hmm. with MPI, but then the liability and the insurance is from a separate insurance. Okay. It's like a fleet instead of an individual. And my last one is 31255 for Spruce Country Computers, 1,314.88 computer network switch for postage meter repair. Where are we at for getting prices for upgrading the software so we can look at transitioning to emailing I just have an email, but I haven't heard back yet, so I'll send a follow-up email. Okay, thank you. That's a 
Uh, just this is more of a reminder. Uh, check three one two zero six is OS and S Park not waste for forty eight thousand two hundred sixty one dollars and ninety three cents. I'm not saying that OS and S is charging too much. I'm saying that we have forty eight thousand two hundred sixty one dollars and ninety three cents going out of the town of Swan River every month and is not being spent here. Okay. <clears throat> and further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 10.2. <coughs> Where's the town of Swan River use <coughs> municipal equipment, materials, and labor to carry out private works on private property under the Municipal Act Clause 252E? Accept <coughs> the fees and charges for the works under Clause 252-1A of the Act, and where a sufficient time has been allowed for payment of such outstanding accounts as listed on the attached Schedule A, totaling $1,264.39. Therefore, be it resolved that each of the unpaid amounts listed on Schedule A be added to the corresponding property tax roll and collected in such a manner that under uh, subsections 252.2 of the Act, be it further resolved that notice be sent to each property owner detailing the amounts being added to the taxes and advertising that interest will accrue on the set amounts in the same manner as for property uh, taxes effective March the 1st, 2024. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, seconded by <coughs> Councillor Medwood. <coughs> Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 11, 11.1. Resolve the bylaw number three, 2024, being a bylaw of the town of Swanover to establish an organizational structure for the municipality be read a third time and be passed. Moved by Councilor White, seconded by Councilor Medwood. Discussion? This is third reading. This is a recorded vote. All in favor? It's carried. We don't have anything for notice of motion, nothing in camera, so we will go straight to members' privilege, and I will start with uh, Councillor Medwood. Um, a couple things. Uh, if we can do a social media post for reminders for the grant funding applications, there is one that went out, however, it to me was worded as though only past recipients were allowed to apply. So if we can do another one that is transparent and basically as per our bylaw, uh, references the fact that any nonprofit or not-for-profit organization is welcome to apply, that would be appreciated. Um, Recycling, can we please add that to our transportation committee meeting with the snow removal so we can discuss yep, yep, getting yeah, no. working on some of those uh, tenders? Because it was I was under the understanding at some point that we were putting tenders out and making sure they were worded so that it would possibly attract um, options other than the automated bin pickup that might be more cost effective. So. I would love to see that. Uh, oh, we'll let the uh, committee work on that. Yeah, I would love to see that. That's why I'm referencing my chair across the way there. <laughs> I'll just say that we'll probably wait till we get a little bit more information on that. But, uh, on ancient stuff, so we can all do this snow recycling, and so Let's have that meeting and talk about it. Okay. I need facts first. Anything further? I believe, oh, yeah, that's, yeah, that's it. Thank you. Council White. Just trying to read my chicken script. Just, uh, I think there's a significant uh, hockey game in our community on Friday night, I believe. The Stamps are playing as a, a fundraiser for the Cancer Society. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it's something if visitors can attend, it'd be great to uh, support that family. And a compliment them for doing that, which they're doing. On another important note, I can tell you that uh, Mrs. Powell, to my right, is entering her 25th uh, year of marriage. It was your 24th anniversary uh, last night. So congratulations on that, young lady. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Councilor Powell, on that note. On that note. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, no, there's, um, it's going to be a very busy weekend in Spawn River, so you know, um, and hopefully everybody can take in. Um, I know that there's supposedly 16 teams coming for volleyball. Um, there's also going to be um, 
the hockey rink is going to be halting. There's, um, I think it's eight teams coming in for the, the tournament this weekend for them. And then the Stampeders have, you know, um, the Campbells that are um, putting on the uh, Amara Amigos, basically sponsored for cancer care. And uh, also, I know the Stampeders are also having their uh, parent appreciation weekend. So we've got, it's going to be a very busy weekend. So um, hopefully everybody can get out and support them. Um, you know, I went home after our meeting the other night, or last night, and um, I said to myself, I was trying to figure out reconciliation, really. You know, I, I, I know, like I know the calls of action for reconciliation, but I actually, um, I, had, I had to call my mom, and I had to say to her, okay, what, my mom was a residential school survivor, so I said, what does, re what does reconciliation really mean? Like, what, what do you take it as and explain to me? So. And she sent me this, and it was kind of just like a little thing of what exactly, you know, she, she defined it as. Oh, of course, I'm going to lose it now. That's right. Um, where, where um, number one, the restoration of friendly relations. The Truth and Reconciliation Commission of Canada defines reconciliation as an ongoing process of establishing and maintaining respectful relations. Acknowledging the wrongs of the past and learning about the true history so that we can work together to make positive changes. Um, yeah, and that, so she said that to me, and I, it just made me think that, what are we trying, you know, I know that we're trying to learn um, about and the histories and stuff like that, but um, it, it just, it's just one of those things that I just wanted to know from first perspective, really. You know what I mean? So I know we've all, you know, we wonder why sometimes, like we we um, we we honor the treaties and stuff. And there's there, there's lots of little things to learn about it. But I think that um, I think that you know, you know it, it is good for everybody to have that knowledge of just why and what we're why we're doing that. So, yeah, that's my thought. Thank you for that, uh, <laughs> Councillor Baldwin. Oh, okay. Just first to the question, and just that somebody can give me an answer in the next two weeks or three months. <laughs> What would a referendum cost? Twelve thousand. Eight to two weeks. Really depends. Yeah, okay. yeah, it's <laughs> important. That, uh, eight to twelve thousand. Uh, speaking a bit about the meeting last night, and again, I'll go back to my point three of a mill. I, I'm really there seemed to be some attention there. There, yet yeah, again, nothing was decided. We go to G eight, G four meetings. To me personally, there's nothing decided. We talk about it, and we're all going to go back to our council and talk about it tomorrow. I really think that I'm going to talk to CA Cole about bringing a uh, resolution to the next meeting that we will step up to the plate and say so much to go to G8 meetings if everybody else follows. I think we need to be the leaders on this because I don't, I don't actually believe there's anybody there that is going to do the same thing possible. So I think the Thomas Warner needs to be a leader in this and move forward. Look forward to that coming. With that, we talk about shared services, shared this and shared that. We have an opportunity right now that Village of Benito or Swan Valley West is talking about a skate park or a splash park, excuse me. Maybe we should be looking at what we can do to help them. We know we've always asked them to help us with our arena, or help us with this. So maybe something we should look at before we go into our budget is what could we do? To move forward, help them move their project forward. I think in good standings with them, and I think it's a problem just to let them. So, my thoughts on that. Uh, Director Tulson, I just that they're in a busy place, uh, everything's good. I'm just wondering, it's hard to pick out who Arena staff is. Is there a thought of, I don't want to say uniform, but something that sticks? I don't know the gentleman that worked there, but it. If you, something was going wrong, I wouldn't know who to go to. I'd probably go to the canteen. You would have everything there. Pardon me? Yeah, yeah, exactly. But, you know, I just a thought. They'd be happy to wear flag hats. <laughs> yeah, you know, they all got hoodies and things like that. So I think they could, they don't like getting them dirty, um, but we definitely look into something. Well, don't we supply that to them? Uh, like we supply them safety equipment and stuff, like high vis vests and stuff. That's an option. They could wear. They'd be visible, but I could take it back and ask. Okay, that just be an issue. food for yeah. thought. Yep, yeah. yeah, thanks. Okay. It's your turn. Okay, I just would like to mention if you could get me the information on what is wrong with the lagoon. I really need to know point form. 
what the dilemma is with them, and that's pretty much it. You went a long time. I just want to respond to something that he said. If it's called a uniform, I believe in Manitoba, the employer is required to provide said uniform. So if you, if it is decided that the arena staff should wear certain attire so they can be identified, then yes, the, I believe the town of Swan River has to provide that. This is not a time of debate, but I'll let you finish. So, I just am going back to the fact that the safety, they should have vests on. Yeah. You've got Zambonis back at home, don't they? they should wear vests. That would probably be sufficient. There's not too many people coming to the hockey game to wear a mask. Thank you. So, boy, Chuck. Um, so, I'm going to piggyback on a few things that have already come up. Um, I really feel that uh, the meetings that we host there, the G4 and G8, I, I would like them to see the attendance be mandatory by all municipal councils, First Nations, Metis governments. Uh, and held on a more regular basis if the valley truly wants to be working together on a regional basis i think that the only way to do that is to keep coming together and the more we come together and the more we talk about things uh and like council Glaubic had brought up at that meeting and previously putting a, a certain percentage of that mill together for that group to make those decisions with at that time and actually carrying some weight and some value I think that would also bring people to the table there if they know that their ratepayers funds are there and, and you're going to be voting on things that they'll be doing I think that'll that'll get maybe those individuals that might not think that there's you know the importance of coming to them um, and then the other thing is you also lose a lot of, of of the communication that goes on right at the time like when somebody tries to go back and communicate that to individuals and I'm not saying everybody can be there all the time things come up and things happen but you lose some of the message I think um, I, I, I do feel it's very important and uh, I, I really like the idea um, to piggyback yes Friday night February 9th the mayor's amigos and Joel Campbell uh, game night uh, the funds are being raised for cancer care Manitoba program they're having the first ever player shootout uh, bidding takes place in the first intermission, so make sure that uh, the community comes out and fills that old barn and support this very special night. And if that's not enough, Saturday night's game is the Stamps Cash Lotto Draw, so if you haven't got your ticket for that, you better do so quick. And if you're bored during the day, please come out and watch the U11 hockey tournament that's going on there, as well as the volleyball that's up there. Our community is bringing in a lot of events and a lot of business for our uh, business people here and I uh, hope they appreciate the effort that goes into that. Um, as far as the Swan Valley Legacy uh, presentation last night, I hope it helped the surrounding municipalities to understand that it really is very much in the preliminary stages um, of planning and it was basically to open the communication between this, and I want to reiterate this, I don't know how I can say this, this volunteer group volunteer group that has come together to assist the community in getting this project done and taking the time out of their busy work schedules to do a lot of leg work and take a lot off other plates whether it's our administration whether we have assistance from our surrounding areas I just want to make sure that that people understand this is a volunteer group and I know that some questions couldn't be answered um, maybe to some people's liking but it was just to go and show that no things haven't been done things haven't been planned without our surrounding municipalities it truly is in the infancy stages for that to those decisions to be made and no one's being left out of of anything um, and we really truly do need all municipal governments first nations metis governments school boards and local businesses and residents to get behind it if it's going to succeed um, it needs commitment from the valley and that's uh, oh the one other thing you mentioned the lagoon the one question I have with the lagoon is the sludge measurement so I know we had the other things but what did the sludge start at and where did it end I know it's sticking up stick down and poking but I still want to know where it started and where it ended at the la at the end of that EMF 1000 treatment for I can send you uh, the measurements it was essentially not no significant change this no. year but was there last year I thought there was a last year it did go down a little bit but to me that's within the margin of error of the 
measurements just yeah. because we're on a moving on a boat it's not moving but the wind's pushing it and I'm pushing you know into the sludge and then stopping when I hit the clay base mm -hmm. and it was there was a few centimeters but I don't know to me <coughs> it would be hard to say that for sure was a decrease as opposed to just variability and Okay. Where, where I'm pushing into essentially. Mm -hmm. Okay. Put it more Just uh, one thing for me, and it's more of a public uh, safety message. Um, it's been something that's I've been witnessing, um, especially over the last couple of weeks um, in the school zones. Um, traffic, especially in the last two weeks, um, has been an apparent. I wouldn't say, I don't know, conscious, but an apparent disregard for school speeds, zones, school uh, parking, bylaw parking infractions, uh, parking in the T's, parking in fire hydrants, not stopping for kids, all those hitting kids. Like last two days ago, I almost witnessed a kid at Taylor School get crushed between two cars uh, before almost stepping into the lane of a, a speeding vehicle through. Um, it, it's just the trend continues where it is one of our kids in this community either at one of the um, elementary or the junior high or the high school is going to get hurt or worse killed uh, i've been talking to the principal um, who's already contacted by law um, to maybe make some present uh, be present in some enforcement or education and stuff like that but not everybody needs to park on the doorstep of the school. Uh, I, I witnessed it at all the, the, the schools, but uh, Taylor especially, like the arena has this big parking lot where people can park in there. Um, when kids are stepping over snow banks or now with the ice, they come running, they're not the ones looking for uh, the traffic and stuff like that. When you've got crossing guards that are having a hard time to do their jobs, um, as five-year-old or five graders, it's uh, it's disheartening that there's just, just a total lack of respect of drivers um, in our community in the school zones at that time, in both morning and afternoon. Like so, uh, I just ask, and I, I passionately, I look as a parent and to all parents that uh, respect the school zones, especially during morning and drop-offs. Um, Swan River is not that big. It's you can get from point A to point B in under five minutes. And if you can avoid the, the school zone and you don't have to, um, there's a point like one of the things is like uh, I notice our public works. It's like I know it's at the end of coffee time, but it's like all of a sudden there's an influx of public works traffic through school zones. Uh, pick a different route. Like it's going to add two three minutes to go two blocks over versus going through the down ninth or thirteenth or I think second. So I just. Just ask the, the parents and drivers in the community to take a little bit more conscientious effort to respect uh, the parking bylaws and the school zones and watch out for our children at the, the schools. Points. <clears throat> well, being that I live right on 2nd Street, I regularly throughout the day see that speed sign flashing well above what it should be. Does that record? those speeds and who has access to that information? Um, Matt Linick is going to be providing counsel with reports and the protective services report. So he'll have uh, quarterly reports that you'll get the speed sign down. Okay, yes, it does keep down. That might be something to look into and maybe connect with the RCMP and maybe see if we can't have, even if there, someone's available, just to kind of sit out there, because they're the ones I'm thinking would enforce some of those infractions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now that we have Matt, as soon as that data is downloaded, it'll automatically go to the person. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, for me, uh, nothing much more than what you guys are already talking about, but I guess uh, uh, in the last couple weeks I had. Um, couple AMM meetings uh, of the board. Uh, in particular, we actually did some traveling with uh, some of our uh, parkland uh, municipalities, so we picked three this this uh, this winter, I guess you can say. Uh, it's interesting some of the conversations that we had with some of the head of councils and uh, with um, 
uh, other CEOs and the issues that they deal with, with that are similar to ours. And uh, it is right across the whole province. And you know, crime is obviously a big highlight to that. And uh, provincial funding, where you know the AMM is still lobbying for uh, you know the, the uh, correct amount of money or, or transfers that we can receive from the province. So that's kind of an ongoing thing. Um, some of the other things that kind of stand out were uh, obviously the crime part, but some of the serious crimes in some of the um, rural areas of, of uh, some areas, and it's it's serious and it's it's scary. And so that's why I still think that this GIS unit that we're lobbying so hard with the uh, our neighboring municipalities is so important that we need to move forward with it. Um, and we have an opportunity here right now to uh, to get this accomplished. Uh, but uh, <coughs> the uh, AMM is uh, is working really hard on behalf of our municipalities, and I know we had some issues with uh, questions about our insurance and, and all that with our rates and. Those things are being dealt with. I know the CEO has been working with them as well as that. So that's kind of an ongoing thing. So it's a, it's a great, it's a good board, and uh, they do a really good job for the municipalities. And one other thing in one of our discussions or meetings with um, Gilbert Plains actually has their own uh, student uh, uh, youth counselor as well, and uh, and she's very active actually on their on their council. So. Uh, I know that Domingo's not here with us tonight, but uh, she was at our G4 and G8 meeting last night, which was really good. And so I, I'd like to sit down and talk to her and see what she thought about that. But uh, yeah, there's a few municipalities that do have youth council, so it's a great thing. So I'll move on to everybody else. Uh, I'll start with CFO Ganita tonight. Just a slight correction on the budget. There are two capital projects that require borrowing, the pump for one replacement and the columbarium. And uh, as far as uh, Councillor Bobbitt's question, I'd like to know as soon as possible what percentage increase council will accept. Oh, yeah. Well, we'll wait till you have your uh, financials done for 2023 and we'll have more discussion about that. Is there anything else? No. Okay, thank you. Uh, Director Clausen. Nothing for me tonight. No? Okay. Director Harvey. Uh, <clears throat> just a good point. Councilor Morio made uh, maybe the next meeting with the RCMP it could be mentioned uh, if they do have time, if they're doing traffic to do some patrolling in the <clears throat> school zones because as you say it's a small community so we'll word will get around if a few people get tickets if they're speeding through uh the word will get open yeah i agree cao pool uh no just to add that uh our youth counselor did come up after the meeting last night and wants to be a part of the cswb uh, program if she could not maybe every meeting but when she can and, mm -hmm. and see what the school division student body bring to the table. Okay. I think that's a great idea. Erin, can I just ask, how, what's the outdoor rink? Like, how is that? Melty. Yeah. Um, we have to repack all the sides on the, on the one in the back. But if the temperatures drop, I think we can still save it. But it's pretty bad shape right now. Yeah. We did close it. But, you know, they jump, they jump the sides and they go on. Um, but there isn't much left of some of the corners right now, but hopefully we can still save it. Yeah, Mother yeah. Nature was not nice to us this year. Okay, thank you. Uh, one last thing that I missed was um, a question was asked, I think a couple of meetings ago about a, uh, an invoice that was paid for two members of council that went to a, uh, a lunch and it was over the amount of money that was allowed for uh, for lunch meetings, and there's a correction there that um, the meeting actually was with three people and not with two. So that's, I just wanted to clarify that because that was not clarified that night. And with that, well, since we're getting double, um, about the school zones there, is there any way to look into a license plate reader like they have in the cities that automatically snap the photo and send the ticket 
because I think if you were to implement that, that's something that's at that location all the time rather than members trying to get time to go and, and sit there. And I mean, a lot of the times they just, I mean, it's be straightforward, there's probably not a lot of free time to do that in a day. I mean, if they do, they definitely will, um, but that would be something that would be enforceable all the time. And depending on the pricing, we could put that in all the school zones and have coverage all the time. And you wouldn't have to be worried about people, oh, I see a cop car there, I'm going to drive properly. It's going to be there all the time and there's nothing we can do about it. So, and yeah, I think it'd be a better uh, better option. Okay. All right, with that, uh, we shall move to adjournment. So the result of this regular meeting of council now be adjourned at 8.16 p.m. Moved by Councilor Medwood, seconded by Councilor Powell. All in favor? It's carried.